Hey y'all, it's Easton Corbin here, and you're watching Strike TV. Somebody's gotta be country in this town. Somebody's gotta be. Hey everybody, Brian here. Welcome to Strike TV Video Country Backstage Access. We're on the bus. Now, I think if we're honest with ourselves, and it, it is what it is, but in the industry, they say, is it country or not? <laughs> your first single, a little more country. A little more country than that. Then uh, now your latest single, Somebody's Gotta Be Country. Yeah, man. It's almost like a little more country than that part, too. Yeah, know? and so no doubt, this man is country. Everybody make some noise for Easton Corbin. Yeah. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on, a bit louder than that. <laughs> Woo! It's on the bus, Noah. Man, thanks for doing this, guys. No, good thank to you see for you having me. me. Absolutely. Because you're a busy man. We've been busy. So yeah. you got the new single. New single. And now, what about the album? Because, man, and, and I, you know, uh, we've been working on some stuff in the, in the you know, the studio. We got a lot of songs, man, and we're just kind of putting some stuff together. Um, and we're fixing to release a new song here. Okay, uh, yeah. if, if I can bring it up. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Called yeah. Uh, Raising Humans. Really, really special song, Raising Humans. Yes. And uh, it's it's funny because I heard this song, I think, five or six years ago. My, my old producer played it for me. And man, it just it blew me away. Right. And uh, it's the thing about it, you know, it, it is about raising humans, but it's a, a little bit different angle. Mm -hmm. It's kind of from a dog's perspective. And I love it's the an dog. interesting thing about it is my buddy Michael White. He had a dog named Max, and he had Max for years, you know, and Max was with him through everything. And, right. and, you know, finally come that dreaded day where Max got older and I think he got sick, and, and he had to put him down. Wow. And uh, he came home that night and he said, man, I wonder what Max would say. And so wow. he wrote it from that perspective, and man, it's just it's just a really touching song. Whether you have a dog or not, yeah. you know, you can relate to it. Because exactly. not only is it to me a dog song, it's like for me, it also reminds me of my grandma, and that just how you know, just raising humans, you know. And, uh, I know my guitar player first heard it. He's like, man, it reminds me of my dad. Yes. My dad just passed away. Yeah. And uh, so it's really one of those songs that really transcends mm -hmm. a lot. And uh, we're also working with uh, a, a charity called Companions for uh, Heroes, and it provides uh, dogs for veterans yes. that are suffering from yeah. you know, uh, different things and, and things like that. So it's a great, great you know partnership. Um, I was going back and forth to Nashville, you know, while I was going to the University of Florida. Yeah. And uh, I had a cousin, I thought he was a history professor at the University of Montana, and found out he helped start the music management pro program at the University of Montana. And he got a hold of some of my demo stuff, and he said, man, I really like it. And he said, I usually don't get involved with family. Yeah, yeah. But he said, I think this is good enough to, to you know, put some people here. And he asked me if that was okay. I was like, of course. So, you know, I graduated, that went a little bit, and I graduated from UF, and I moved up to Nashville and started working at Ace Hardware. And, uh, man, he had got me in front of, or, well, I played for a lot of people, you know, you just, it's one of those things you just, well, who's this guy going to play for, you know, right. it's like, well, they, you should just play for a lot of people. Well, finally, one day, he got me, uh, my cousin got me in front of a guy named uh, James Yellich, okay. and uh, brought me in there to play, and there was a guy in there named Joe Fisher. I had no clue what Joe Fisher did. I just thought he was another guy there to listen. Okay. So got through playing my deal and, and everything, and they all liked it. And finally, Joe left. And I, I asked James, I said, man, what is he doing here? And he said, oh, he's uh, A&R for Universal. I was like, what's A&R? Yeah. Well, they're the guys that signed me for record. I'm like, really? Oh, my God. <laughs> I just like this. You know, so, so I, and I'm glad he didn't tell me, or I, I'm glad I didn't know that because yeah. I'm mean, that much more nervous. Right. And uh, so, then Joe had me come up and play for Brian Wright, and man, those guys, they signed me there. You know, that wow. day, they're off me a record that day. So do you remember what songs did you play for? Do you remember? I remember I played a song called Working Man Blues. You know that one. <laughs> Everybody knows <laughs> that one. Uh, yeah. Man, and actually a couple originals that I had done some demos on. Okay. Uh, a thing called, uh, uh, oh my gosh, I can't think of it anymore. Man Behind the Wheel is a song. Okay. A guy named Reese Wilson wrote that song, and I cut it. And uh, a few other things, yeah. All right, so speaking of Working Man Blues, I think we know Haggard, your man. Oh, yeah, he's one of my heroes. So, so give me a couple of your favorite Haggards. I know, oh, and I, well, I mean, you can't, I know it's one of those, you can't tell him one. Yeah. Because that, that just didn't, that didn't. Uh, you know, the day I started loving you again is probably okay. one of my favorites. Obviously, Working Man Blues, I always used to play that out. Uh, oh, my gosh. Um, uh, Hungry Eyes is a great song. Uh, I don't know. So many. There's so many. Just yeah. start 
Yeah. It's like the it's like the down every road box set. Oh you my! Know? Oh I, yeah, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> give me, just just give, just give me the four. every one of them. Just yeah. give me the four discs. Yeah, very cool. Diana, song. what a great song, Diana. I mean, it's it's not. It's endless, man. It's endless. Right. Yeah. So so speaking of so you know we talk about some new music coming out, and I know somebody had mentioned about possibly about the greatest hits, but I think if we're honest with ourselves, you know everything. Man, you got you got some songs. We do. Come on, be real. <laughs> How in the world do you pick your set list? You know, it's well. I mean, we obviously uh, what we try to do. We, we get all the songs we've had singles on radio, right. things like that. But what we do is because especially when we come to Texas and Oklahoma, we got, I mean, we've got great fans all over the country, uh, especially down here. A lot of these guys ain't nothing to beat cuts. If you uh, if you could do a duet, who would you do a duet with? Uh, alive or dead? Either or. It's it's your show, bro. Probably, man. Haggard. Lily. Or something like that. Or something make you look bad. <laughs> you, know? you better be on you, you better be on your game. And, and there's a thing I like, so I um you're very involved in so we EastonCorbin.com for one thing, right? Yep. Easton Corbin. And you're big on Instagram? Instagram. So then you have your um Only if it has a blue check mark beside it. Yeah, because don't, don't fall for the imposters. That's right, because he'll be sending you some crazy stuff and you don't want to get in that. You're asking for some money and everything? Yeah, uh, well, not me, but the imposter. So, again, <laughs> if it don't have a blue check mark, it it's ain't me. Yet. So, um, Throwback Thursdays. Yes. How cool yeah. is that? So, y'all go check it out. Follow them on Facebook, the blue check mark, Instagram stuff. So. Yeah. Well, sometimes, because I don't get a chance to do those songs like I used to all the time. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, in yeah, our yeah. set list, we kind of do the same thing every night. Right. Uh, and, or not the same thing, but variations of it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, a lot of those old songs I used to do all the time when I play out. I don't get to do them as much. So, yeah, sometimes I have to brush up on them, but they usually come right back. So for this new album, did you listen to, was there anything that inspired you or really made you think that changed, maybe for this new record? Because, you know, because I mean, even last what, last year, you had a, what, a top five song? We did, we did. Yeah. So, and now, I mean, so the good thing is, I mean, if you release it, pretty much, it's doing okay. Yeah, it's good, man. Um, you know, for me, I think my first record inspired me. Yeah. Because I want to get back to my roots and really what I love, you know. And and, and but but obviously you gotta, you know, move forward and progress yeah. as an artist. But going back and listening to that first record, it's like, man, I, I recorded I mean I record all these songs I love, but there was something about that first record that was really special. And, and just because at that point, you know, as an artist, you're a young artist and you're kinda of, you're innocent as far as your uh, you're looking for songs, you just record songs you love. You don't think much about it. You know, it's just like I love that song. And what was crazy? And you don't think you don't think, well, man, I love this gonna work on radio, or man, I'm just gonna work here. When you make your first record, you're not thinking about that stuff. Yeah. And that, that's what. So for your first record, I mean, I know they say you get when you get a lifetime, you make your first record. Yeah, How long did it take you to really put off? I mean, was it kind of because I know you got the record deal, you still worked, but yeah. how long was it for it to get put that record together? Man, it's about a year at least. A year at least. At least. But yeah. but what's interesting is so that that album for the year broke records. Did it not for your first? So here's what's interesting: the first two singles for a debut, I think, went number one. So yeah, and that had been done yeah, yeah in 17 Walker. years. Yeah. So oh, it was Clay. It's actually Clay. Walker. Oh, that's some Texas guy. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> Who's that guy? Some Texas guy. Yeah. Man, so you discovered you're into some doing some bike thing now or something? Is yeah, that... man, I've been riding dirt bikes and stuff. I've ridden motorcycles. I've ridden motorcycles for a long time, but okay. I just kind of got into the dirt bike thing. It's a lot of fun. A little bit different than that. I know enough to bust my butt. Right. Well, well, of course. That's, yeah, that's part of it. So uh, with, the, with the whole music industry and everything now, is there anything you're listening to that you really, that you're like, man, this is just good stuff? Man, like I said, not necessarily. It's just, you know, the cool thing about this whole opportunity is I've had a chance to go back and write songs that I love and kind of get back to my roots. And that's what we're doing. I'm just getting in there writing songs that are easy to form in songs. And I think that's important for me is to, you know, when I record a song, record a song on the iPhone. You know, exactly. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, I mean, honestly, I think we're honest with, if it's like one of those, if you hear it, if you hear East of Corbin, you know it's East of Corbin. Exactly. Right. I mean, that's a lot of times when, when the first eight bars, four, four, whatever in the world you want to call it these days, you kind of pretty much know. So, um, so you got a new record that hopefully going to come out soon. And so now you got a new stage show. You kind of renew rigs. And yeah, we did. All we kind of stuff. Yeah, we went back and, and put a new show together. And, and the cool thing about this set that we have is, is it doesn't matter what size venue you play. Yeah. From an arena, you can set it up as big as you want to in there, or a you know a, a club like this, which is yeah. a little bit smaller. So you can take downsize that thing, and you still can use your set. It's pretty cool. That's awesome. 
Yeah. All right, man. Well, hey, I appreciate you because I know you're a busy yeah. man. So I like uh, the guitar, man. That, you know, it's, yeah, man. It's, it's a good taste. I it, like it's it. all right, isn't it? Something like that. <laughs> so I was telling him, so this makes a number 203 for me. Not Easton Corby. Oh, okay. Got free I was like, man. I don't want that. Man. I don't want that. So the good thing is it's going to go by Haggard and Jones and Ray Price and Glenn Campbell and like Roy it. Clark and Loretta okay. Lenz and all them other stuff. Good company. The good company stuff. So, uh, but y'all check it out, EastonCorbin.com. EastonCorbin.com. I'm on Facebook, Instagram. Go give me a follow. And, uh, yeah, it's good. All right, guys. So we got uh, a show to do. That's <laughs> appreciate it. <laughs> Brian, here's No, I, I wasn't trying to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. Hey, look. No, this, no. this is your show. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so check us out, StrikeTV.com. Backstage access, Easton Corbin, Brian. Thanks, Daryl. Thanks, Tommy. See y'all.